This video is going to help you tremendously if you're getting ready for a CPR class, a BLS class, or if you're in EMT school. Let's dive into it. I want to help decrease failure rates for NREMT, for EMT school, for paramedic school. Watch these videos, watch this content, and believe me, you will start to understand EMS medicine. Anybody out there that wants to serve their community as an EMT or a paramedic should be able to do that. And I'm here as a paramedic coach to help you achieve that. Hey everyone, it's Paramedic Coach back here with another video. If you're new here, be sure to hit like and subscribe down below. Join our EMS family here, our community. We do videos every single day here at the Paramedic Coach. So let's talk about today's topic, which is CPR and AED tips. Now, if you are a layperson watching this video or you're an EMT student, you're gonna get a massive amount of value from this video. Um, I'm gonna break down the why in this video behind CPR. If you're just starting your journey in medicine, you're just learning about CPR for the first time, what I wanna tell you is this. If you understand the why behind what you're doing, doing it in real life, but also learning it is so much simpler. And that's our whole goal here with the paramedic coach, to understand the why so questions become easy. What we're doing in CPR is we are basically the pump of the heart. Think about it like that, okay? Make it simple. Your hands are the pump of the heart because the heart is not pumping anymore. Okay, so we got that, right? So we're gonna pump the heart with our hands. We're, like, the thing about the an automatic pump is the heart going by itself. We're gonna use the manual pump, which is our hands, okay? So that is how we pump blood. So the heart pumps blood around the body. So your hands are keeping the patient alive by pumping. Okay, I got that. Now, well, what else do people need to live? Well, they need oxygen. That's true. We breathe in oxygen. We breathe in oxygen. Carbon dioxide goes out. We got that. So wouldn't that be nice to do that as well? Yeah, that's part of it. All right. Now, here's the way to remember what to do first. If you see somebody go down or in front of you, let's say you're at a mall or a park, cardiac arrest. What do you do first? Well, the first thing you do, think about it. What's the first thing you would do? It's called 911. Now, they may call that activate emergency response system. If you're an EMT watching this, you are the response system. So that's already checked off. Again, think about it in real life. Those are the real steps, like on the, on the test as well. Okay, what else? Let's keep going here, okay? Now, oh, the patient has no pulse and they're in cardiac arrest. We got that. That's the next step, okay. Well, what do you think would be the most important next step? Well, did you know that when someone goes into cardiac arrest, the body has oxygen stores for a couple minutes, still going around, okay? Different studies will say different things, okay? But think about it, you have a couple minutes of oxygen still going around the bloodstream in the body. What does this mean? This is the reason why chest compressions are going to be the main thing. Because think about it. If you're still focused on getting in oxygen, you're not pumping any blood. So in, you know, so in layperson CPR, that's what you do. You find somebody when you know, there's no pulse, they're not breathing, or they have agonal respirations, you know? They're not breathing in a correct manner and they're unresponsive. Well, what are you gonna do? Well, just focus on compressions until help arrives. So if you're a layperson watching this video, don't even worry about the airway. Don't even think about it. Just do compressions until somebody arrives that's gonna save someone's life. That's why it's a class one recommendation. But there's more though, there's more though. Well, what else can we do besides that? Well, think about it. Here are the steps. Call 911 or activate your emergency response system. Got it. Go to the patient. Yep, they're in cardiac arrest. All right, okay. They're in cardiac arrest. Now what do I do? Well, I, what's the first thing? Start compressions. What else am I gonna do? Well, I need an AED. Remember, there's two class one recommendations it's gonna be the CPR and the AED. Okay, so the AED, well, what do we do next? Well, if we're the one at the scene doing the compressions, we need to call for the AED, call for help. What if there's nobody there? That's a tough, tough, tough situation. What would I do, what would I personally do if I was in that situation is I would have my phone 
911, calling 911 speaker, and I would continue compressions because I would use the, the, the why. What's the why? If I'm not pumping this heart, this heart stopped. So if you see someone go down, they already have the oxygen and you're pumping, think about it, you're, do, you're doing good work. Hopefully the ambulance arrives soon, they're gonna have an AED or they're gonna have a heart monitor and wait till it arrives. I wouldn't leave the patient and, and then they go shoo, right down, okay? Now that's a crazy scenario. So here's the good news about using the AED for everybody watching. The AED does the work for you. All you gotta do is open it, turn it on, place the pads in the patient, there's little pictures of how to do it, and then you go from there. And then the AED, just follow what the AED says and you follow what it does. So it's not, it's not don't be nervous about using an AED, it's easy. It's, it's like having a coach, on, it's like having a, a coach on the scene. Uh, the AED coached you what, through what to do. Now, I wanna talk about different scenarios, different things. Again, this is C, CPR and AED tips. We're just talking here, some quick tips. Now, one thing that's in EMS, and I'm not sure why it's not in the hospital. Hey, comment down below. Why do you think this isn't, isn't in so many hospitals, but it's in EMS? What do you think? Um, is what's called a Lucas device. So what this is, is a device you put around the patient, and it does perfect CPR like a robot. And it never gets tired because it's a machine. Um, I highly recommend it. I highly recommend it because humans get tired. You know, we can get tired with our CPR, and that's going to really drop that perfusion to the rest of the body. Now, the Lucas never gets tired. So we can focus on being, so that what we need to do, which is the IV insertion, the, in, the innovation, right? The med, the times, the patient movement, the critical thinking skills as well, though. There's going to be critical thinking at a code, agents and T's, right? For my uh, ACLS providers out there watching this, this cast here, right? So that's, some, that's some critical thinking. That's why I say, why not have the Lucas? Um, I would definitely recommend any agency invests in a Lucas. Um, you talk about saving a life, man, that makes a big difference. Go back to our previous scenario with the, with the uh, one rescuer. That one rescuer in, a, in, a, in an odd world had access to a Lucas. They could put the Lucas on, <laughs> go away, get the AED and come back, right? I know it sounds crazy, but again, this is us talking here about CPR and AD. Now let's go back quickly to ventilating the patient. So when we talk about ventilating the patient, remember, why are we doing it? Well, oxygen must go in, carbon dioxide must go out. If someone's in cardiac arrest, they're not breathing on their own. So we have to help them do that. Just like we're helping them with the heart pumping, right, the, right we're in the manual pump of the heart, well, we have to also breathe it in and out for them as well. So how do we do that? Here's the first step of airway. Okay, I'm gonna give you a step by step. Step one with airway. We have to open the airway. Okay, step one. Medical head tilt chin lift. Jaw thrust maneuver is trauma. Okay, so now we, first step. Remember the, just remember one is open. Okay, number two is, is it clear? So two is clear. So is the airway clear? If there's blood secretions, we need to suction that out, okay? Number two, if it's clear, continue. Step three, keep. Keep means I need to place an adjunct to keep the airway patent or open, okay? So what does that mean? Well, it could be an OPA or an NPA, okay? And I'll show a picture of some of these things here. And then and finally, step four is going to be the BVM, the bag valve the mask device. It's a mask with a little, uh, I call it a push grip here, okay? So you have a grip and you just push on and squeeze the bag, right? You're gonna, and that's how you ventilate in and out, in and out on a patient, in and out of a patient, one breath every five or six seconds, okay? Do not hyperventilate and get nervous and go like this. It's one breath every five, six seconds, okay? If you feel a little pumped up, think more six seconds. You'll probably do it in five in real life, okay? Now, if you're watching me on YouTube and you love this content and you want more content, you want my video vault of all my videos from BLS to ALS with lifetime access, uh, you'll see on the screen a little screenshots and video clips of what the members area actually looks like on the inside. And if you're getting ready for your NREMT boards, this is the number one study tool I can give you, which is my life-saving video vault. 
So if you're one of these three people, if you're getting ready for EMT or medic school, advanced EMT school, if you're getting ready for uh, NREMT, getting ready for your national registry boards, or if you're in school right now and you're struggling, and you're trying to understand at a deep level, but a simple level, the why behind what you do. Click the link in the description down below, get access. Right now, it is lifetime access at the beta price. So if you're on the fence, act now. And everyone, I will see you next time. Thank you for your kind words. Thank you for your comments. And I will see you tomorrow. Obviously passing the exam, doing it pretty quickly, 70 questions in about an hour. Um, so that was relief. I want to help decrease failure rates for NREMT, for EMT school, for paramedic school. Watch these videos, watch this content, and believe me, you will start to understand EMS medicine. Anybody out there that wants to serve their community as an EMT or a paramedic should be able to do that. And I'm here as a paramedic coach to help you achieve that.